numpty dipshit soundly, Mr. Planet Orleans Parish. <laughs> 16 May 2020. Wait, what's the, what's the globe Earth formula then? Maybe I got it wrong. I thought it was 8 inches per mile squared. Well, I have a video on that if you want to go watch it. 8 inches per mile squared is an estimation. That's not the oh. actual curve of the Earth. No. Oh, really? George the Pontiff Maximus of Retardia, three days earlier. Uh, there's a common misconception, uh, Tim and uh, Professor Bell, regarding this eight inches per mile squared. If you take the chord distance between the two endpoints, it's exact, no approximation. Absolutely priceless. Soundly, it's an estimation. It's not the actual curve of the Earth. Then we have Numpty George. It's exact. No approximations. This is the quintessential example of Baltar doublespeak. With an added bonus, George the Pontiff Maximus of Retardia is in the very same conversation at the same time and doesn't correct soundly waffles on about some other nonsensical bullshit. Well, that, with that's real. So you're saying you created a model based on not actual reality and you got it to work? No, I created an estimation. So why yeah. are we using estimates to, to prove the shape of the Earth? Chris, you need because you can't, understand, you can't understand the elliptoid. What the hell did you just say? You can't understand the elliptoid. <laughs> that's why. You need to you. understand, Chris, that when you intersect a sphere with an infinite plane, you get a circle. Hey, George, you have the intellectual integrity of a spry Benedict Arnold. And soundly, numpty dipshit, what in the great googly moogly is an elliptoid? You can't make this shit up, folks. Busted again. Play it again, Sam. Wait, what's the what's the globe Earth formula then? Maybe I got it wrong. I thought it was eight inches per mile squared. Well, I have a video on that if you want to go watch it. Eight inches per mile squared is an estimation. That's not the oh. actual curve of the Earth. No. Oh, really? Uh, there's a common misconception, uh, Tim and uh, Professor Bell, regarding this eight inches per mile squared. If you take the chord distance between the two endpoints, it's exact. No approximation. Eight inches per mile squared is an estimation. It's exact. No approximation. Eight inches per mile squared is an estimation. It's exact. No approximation. And in, the, in these smaller scales, we see gravity working exactly as we expected to. At the larger scales, it doesn't work that way. We're trying to figure out where the nuance is. The nuance is that you're a weaky parroting imbecile. This is what we call a circle jerking doofus okie doke. Present your fairy tale in two or more different scenarios or conditions, then have you chase your tail contemplating the conditions, leaving the mother fairy tale imagination unscathed uh mr elliptoid planet orleans parish crayon muncher gravity doesn't and has never existed no scientific evidence whatso friggin ever there's tons of evidence showing that the earth is old sure and liberace's sister was a saudi prince a mile mile fighter pilot and tons of sasquatch you're just an evolutionist in ball tarred clothing Mountains and tons of evidence fiascos. There is no scientific evidence of the dating game. The entire topic is non sequitur to the scientific method. By the way, quantum mechanics takes your tons of dating game evidence out back to the woodshed and beats it into a bloody lifeless pulp, pretender clown parroter. I'm the resident theist on the panel, by the way. That's what, cre that's what the creation is never, like, allowed for, right? What the hell did you just say? I'm the resident theist on the panel, by the way. That's what, cre that's what the creation is never, like, 
allow for, right? Say what? So let me get this straight, Mr. Elliptoid. You state that you're a theist, but then you besmirch creationists? It just don't make no damn sense. So you're a theistic non-creationist. That'll give married bachelors, acromatic rainbows, and military intelligence a run for their money. They, they want to, like, pigeonhole all the evidence and interpret it their way. That's why we love you, Unsoundly. Your meticulous attention to excruciating detail. OCD-like. Completely bereft of utterly ambiguous, stereotypical, baseless assertion fallacies. And they and actually the creationists stereotype fallacy like Kent Hovind, for example, are the ones that actually say, "Oh, well, the scientists are looking at the same evidence; they're just interpreting it a different way." Well, that's correct. Mm. Wrong. Look at you, big dummy. There are no interpretations in natural science, booger eater. It's either a yes or a no, black or white, one or a zero. The method is empirical i.e. objective, whereas interpretations are subjective. You'd fail, fifth grade general science. The creation is stereotype fallacy. You're looking at the same evidence and they're interpreting it in a different way. I got umba. But it doesn't mean one way is better than the other way. That doesn't mean anything just saying those things. You have yeah. to actually, you have to actually put in the work and try and figure out which side is correct. Actually, it should be pretty easy. You simply look at the claims each make, determine whether the claim is scientific, logical, or demonstrative, then evaluate whether the claim is validated or not. Voila. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! And one thing we do know is... Go ahead, skin it. Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. ...that we can see very clearly with radio telescopes that there are certain objects that we can triangulate that are ten thousands of light years away. <laughs> <laughs> That's already more than the six thousand years that the creationists want to claim is the age of the Earth. Wrong. Light years is not a measure of distance or time, booger eater. Unless you can show the one-way speed of light. Of course, it's impossible to measure. Forever illusory. Ergo, your claim is a fatality. Laughingly so. We make assumptions about the homogene uh, homogeneous nature of the universe, and also we make assumptions about... Uh, that certain physical rules or physics, you know, works the same way here as it does there. Sure, we make those assumptions, but what better assumptions can you make? You're not making any assumptions. You're making an error brought on by mindlessly parroting pseudoscientists and evotards from Wiki and Discovery Channel. It doesn't have anything to do with... Works the same way here as it does there. Or... The homogeneity... Uh, genius nature <laughs> it simply has to do with begocking nonsensical drivel without any due diligence or scrutiny mr. theistic non-creationist <laughs> <laughs> like hey, you, you can just say willy-nilly oh it must work differently out there that's not science that's just wishful thinking feeble straw man fallacy Nobody's saying that, Mr. Planet Orleans Parish. And that's what creationists stereotype fallacy are doing. Can can we tell what our physical location is, and can we tell how far we've traveled in, you know, say a month? Can we tell how far we've traveled in space in a month? Sure, we can. Yes, and dark matter is created from nothing by luminescent gerbils. First, you'd have to establish that the Earth is moving, window licker. Until then, you're just pissing into a headwind. It's also a textbook example of Petitio Principi.
the logical fallacy of begging the question. A particular argument which commits the fallacy of begging the question, a circular argument. I can pick something up and let it go and see that it falls towards the earth. That's gravity. That is an observation. Really? Drop some helium, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor, Gilligan. What happens then? Also, numpty dipshit, whenever you mindlessly parrot gravity, you immediately invoke a cause. Either the 106-year-out-of-date debunked pseudoscience, Reverend John Michelle Cavendish C.V. Boy's gravity, or the new hotness, Einstein's bendy space-time. So far, all you've done is just observed an effect with an item you didn't identify. Not very rigorous, Mr. Elliptoid. In fact, Pathetically proby. Clown. As a matter of fact, I'd bet the farm that an incoherent junior high intro to physics graduate would perform better than your dumbass. It's patently obvious that you're nothing but a sack sniffing cretin that wouldn't know his ass from a torque wrench. There's something that's <laughs> causing this cup that I've just picked up to drop to my desk when I let go of it. Yeah, we're told it's bendy f space time that's causing it you want to scientifically validate that to shovel monkey or just continue embarrassing yourself with your half-baked elmer fudd sophistry and that thing we're putting a name on it that name that we're putting on that observation is called gravity that's the name we've given that observation well i guess we got our answer this bald tarred bonehead thinks scientific validation is linguistical I like putting it in my own terms because I, I, I do tend to favor uh, intuitive explanations as opposed to technical ones because the, the technical aspects will never be appreciated by flat earthers. <laughs> yeah, you think that's going to fly after your Elmer Fudd f it of the century performance here today, booger eater? You'd have better chances sprouting honey badgers from your armpits. But basically, gravity is the set of observations that we see. You know, gravity is the name that we give to mass attracting mass. Mass attracting mass? Number one, you or anyone else can't even define the disheveled monkey mass. Number two, Martin Rees, astronomer, royale with cheese, esteemed British cosmologist and astrophysicist via PrincetonPress.edu, and I quote, what causes gravity and mass? These questions still baffle all of us. End of citation. According to Professor Reese, does mass attracting mass cause gravity? Nope. Apparently the fine professor here didn't get your mindless wiki discovery channel parroting memo. Perhaps you should educate him. <laughs> Number three. You're not mindlessly parroting the correct pseudoscience, you slee stack sloth. You're just a mere 106 years out of date with your continuing education credits. The new hotness gravity is Einstein's general relativity, which wholesale replaced the mind numbing undefined circular banjo do -si do mass attracts mass. From Science Alert, the mathematical equations of Einstein's general theory of relativity tested time and time again, are currently the most accurate way to predict gravitational interactions. Replacing oh, yeah. those developed by Isaac Newton several centuries prior. Uh-oh! From Douglas Klein, professor of physics, Phys Libre text, Newton's two crowning achievements, the laws of motion and the laws of gravitation that had reigned supreme since published in the Principia in 1687 were toppled from the throne by Einstein. Uh-oh! From Andrea Ghez, UCLA professor of physics and astronomy, Einstein's right, at least for now, said Ghez, a co-lead author of the research, we can absolutely rule out Newton's law of gravity. That's gonna leave a mark. Cheese and crackers. Fatality. 
that we see this behavior happening in reality. Yeah. It's called numpty dipshit pretender clowning. And you're the skipper. We call it gravity. You could, we could have called it anything else. I know. Let's call it pseudoscience. But the fact that this behavior occurs, and I'm not calling it a force intentionally because that's what they like to play games with that, but... Really? Who are they? How about we find out who the game players are? Georgie friggin' Mooser from Scientific American. General Relativity snapped the one and two by showing that the curvature of space-time and not an invisible force gives rise to gravitational attraction. From De Sitter, in Einstein's new theory, gravitation is of a much more fundamental nature. It becomes almost a property of space. Gravitation is thus, properly speaking, not a force in the new theory. From Jacob D. Beckenstein, Caltech. Einstein came up with the theory of general relativity, the prototype of all modern gravitational theories. Its crucial ingredient involving a colossal intellectual jump is the concept of gravitation not as a force, but as a manifestation of the curvature of space-time. From Brian Cox, there isn't really a force of gravity at all. From the universe today, in general relativity, gravity is not a force between masses. From the University of California, Riverside, strictly speaking, gravity is not a force. From Fizorg, according to this theory, gravity is not a force. From New Scientist, so although Earth appears to be pulled towards the sun by gravity, there is no such force. From Fizz Libertext, the answer is that gravitation is not a force between two objects. From Physics Hypertextbook, gravity isn't a force. From Cornell, Joylin Bloomfield, PhD, Physics. So to summarize, general relativity says that matter bends space-time, and the effect of that bending of space-time is to create a generalized kind of force that acts on objects. However, it is isn't a force as such that acts on the object, but rather just the object following its geodesic path through space-time. That's quite an impressive list of game players there, Booger Eater. We have real-world actual historical measurements that show that gravity attracts gravity. That's what happens. That's the behavior of our reality. What the hell did you just say? Gravity attracts gravity. Say what? Gravity attracts gravity. Are you high right now? Gravity attracts gravity. Corn all cars, corn all cars. We have a numpty dipshit. All cars, please assist. All cars, please assist. But basically, gravity is this set of observations that we see. You know, we, you know, we don't know what gravity is. What? You knew what it was about five minutes ago. Gravity is the name that we give to mass attracting mass. We don't know what gravity is. Gravity is the name that we give to mass attracting mass. We don't know what gravity is. <laughs> gravity is the name that we give to mass attracting mass. <laughs> we don't know what gravity is. <laughs> you can't understand the elliptoid. Tender clown face monk. The party's over. <laughs> they say that all good things must end.
Ballers scattered on dawn's highway bleeding. Fallacies and refravity crowd their fragile eggshell minds. Hey! Hello. It's for you. Yeah? You've just been erased. 